Hi everyone! Hi Ingrid! Welcome to a new tutorial. In my last tutorial I showed you how to use the Folk Art multi-surface paint and dot a mug, coffee mug, and then cure the paint in the oven. Today I'm going to be taking you to a little place called Creativity, <laughs> which is in Fairhaven in a historic district in our town, and I'll be getting an unfinished bisque mug and using ceramic glaze to dot with and then I'll be taking it back and we'll fire it in the kiln for 24 hours and I'll show you the finished product. <laughs> we're here in the historic Fairhaven district of my city and we're going to be going up to creativity. Here we are going into creativity. It's a wonderful little shop where you can create ceramics and also sip tea from their wonderful tea selection. So I'm going to compare some acrylic paint with ceramic glaze. And they have a very similar consistency, so they're both great for dotting. Of course the paint has more elasticity and it's much more vibrant. But both are easy to dot with. And ceramic glaze will be much darker after it's been fired in a kiln. So it's good to make a guide. Here is my guide. I used a tile and I painted it, I glazed it black and then put the colored glaze on top and fired it again. And this shows me the true color of the glaze once it's been heated up. And then I can compare it with the color in the bottle when I'm designing my mandalas. So let's get started. This is an unfinished bisque mug that I purchased from Creativity. This is a 16 ounce barrel mug. Just going to wipe it off with a damp sponge just to get all the dust off. And I have a nice flat wide brush with a straight edge. And I'm going to use that to start putting the glaze on on the inside of the mug first. We have to do three different coats of the glaze to make sure it's nice and covered. And I'm starting with the yellow and I'm pulling the glaze up the sides of the cup and just uh, leaving the white edge around the rim. Never brushing downward, just always pulling up. And I'm using my blow dryer to try and dry that first layer a little bit and then I'm going to add the same yellow and some sour apple glaze and I'm going to start to make a gradient so to where it's green at the top of the cup and then yellow at the bottom. Ceramics are really one of the oldest industries in human civilization. We've been making pottery a very long time. Pottery shards are found in archaeological digs all over the world. And glaze was discovered by accident in Egypt in about 8000 BC when some pottery was left in their ovens a little too long and it overheated and it created this glass-like glaze on the outside of the pottery. And that's basically what this stuff is. The, the three essential parts of a recipe for glaze are silica and flux and alumina. And the silica comes from mineral quartz or flint and the flux comes from borax and that lowers the temperature for firing and the alumina clay keeps the glaze from running down the sides as it heats up inside the kiln and the alumina clay is actually called kaolinite it's a sedimentary clay as all clays are and it's mined in all 50 of the United States so at one point all 50 of the United States were underwater it's pretty amazing the uh, U.S. production of kaolinite is about 5 million tons a year and it's mostly mined in Georgia and Texas. And it's also used for things like toothpaste and Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> I bet you didn't know that. Okay, so now that the inside of the cup is done, let's do the outside. Basic glaze is white, so we've been adding some mineral oxides to the glaze to get these wonderful colors to make uh, a blue color glaze you would add cobalt and nickel and to make a, a red glaze you would use iron or copper for orange you'd use cadmium or zinc and for green like on the inside of our cup we'd be mixing in copper and chrome 
and that gives you your different colors as it heats up and fires in the kiln it releases the colors of these metals and it turns into these beautiful glazes almost a, a glass is what we're really creating so you can see on the outside of the mug again I'm pulling up the glaze and leaving the edge of that white and by using that straight edge flat brush you can get that effect that way you don't have to mask off anything it just leaves it white and as it fires in the kiln that will make a nice smooth edge so I know I need to do two more coats of black I do have this wheel that I borrowed from creativity so I can spin it as I'm pulling that glaze up along the edge and that will give me a very smooth coverage and very few brush strokes I just found that that was really handy and if you ever go to creativity you can find these under the sink they have a little cupboard there and the wheels are kept there so I allowed these coats to dry overnight because I wanted them to be very dry and I had three other mugs to do and normally I do mine freehand but I thought I'd show you how to put a grid on here you can use a graphite pencil and make sure it's graphite and not a mixture of graphite and lead or graphite and clay just a soft graphite pencil and I used a measuring tape so I could just lay it right against there I made a cross and now I'm just sort of eyeballing it here in between those two lines to create a diagonal holding it down and these lines because they're graphite they will burn off in the kiln and you won't see them so I've made an eight segment guideline and I'm going to start with the uh, cottontail white and some dandelion yellow and also some orange appeal and some hot tamale I love this red it's a very vibrant red almost looks like stained glass on top of the black and then some cinnamon sticks this is a little deeper red and some curry around which is almost an almond color you'll notice that there's different consistencies right out of the bottle it's the same with acrylic paints you never know from bottle to bottle so here are my tools I'm using these from do-it-yourself mandala stones you can get these online it's a very nice set of tools each tool has two different sized ends and they're numbered so you can go to her website and you can follow along by using the numbers and I'll be showing you the numbers today as I'm working I've made the first dot in the center and I'm doing my uh, blow dryer here because I want to form just a little bit of a crust around the outside on these curved mugs the glaze really does want to run away but don't dry it too much or it'll crack so now I'm using the number three and I'm putting a white dot on each of the guidelines looks like that now back to a number four and I'm going in between each of those dots with some yellow and you have to reload each time just go back over to your palette pick up some more of the glaze and reload each time try and get them the same size now I'm using the size four again but with the orange glaze and going back to the guidelines just trying to get these snugged pretty close but not touching and you see I'm kind of tapping the tool a little bit just trying to encourage the the glaze to let go and to hold on to the mug it's a little different feel than the acrylic paints and I also have a, a stone there I'm using to hold up the side of the mug while I'm working now I'm going to size one and I'm going to walk white dots around the orange dots it's 
a little more difficult than dotting and, and walking dots with acrylic paint because the surface you're dotting on is, is very rough and chalky. It's not a smooth surface and again the glaze doesn't want to come off your tool as easily as it does um, from, with acrylic paint. Back to size three. I'm going to put an orange dot in between the petals. And then jumping up to a size 12, I'm putting a uh, hot tamale red dot on each of the guidelines. You just got to be careful with the larger dots because they they do want to flow. They do want to lean off to one side on these curved mugs. And it, it all depends on the thickness of your glaze, which will be different from bottle to bottle. If you find that it's too runny, just do one side and then blow dry it before you do the other side. Now you're going to walk yellow dots around these. I switched over to my manicure stylus my trusty Essence manicure stylus because I just found that uh, it was easier to walk the dots with a ballpoint. And I found that I couldn't really walk them very far before I had to reload. And so then I switched to my little tiny polymer clay sculpting tool to get my little tiny dots to walk those up. So now I'm doing the curry around this lovely brownish almond shade. And I'm switching to a size 3 back to the hot tamale on the guidelines. And I'm going to be walking those around as well but I'm just doing three in the hot tamale and then I'm switching to the cinnamon sticks as I work my way back toward the center of the mandala. So the outside tip of the petal is going to be a brighter red than the inside edge. That will just give it more of a, a 3D look. You can see how I'm kind of turning the mug, holding it with one hand and then dotting with the other. Back to a size 3. This is dried enough that I can do my top dots. I'm going to put the orange on top of the hot tamale red. And then some yellow on top of the orange. and then some white on top of the yellow. This will just make them stand out a little bit more. Now I'm going to this light green, this sour apple, in between each of the petals. You can see I'm working on three mugs at one time. I'll let one section dry and move on to another mug. Now I'm adding two darker green dots on either side of that and then bumping up to the size 8 and adding a large sure green dot of the Irish luck. Try and line that up. Look, look across your mandala and line that up. I did one side, I let it dry and now I'm going to do the other side. Now I'm adding a final small dot of hot tamale at the end of the petal. I 
And then I added a sour apple, the light green top dot on that Irish luck, the dark, the dark green. So this is what it looks like. It's very textured, very 3D, but all of that is going to turn to glass in the kiln and will be completely flat and much, much darker. So I let these dry completely and then I took them back to Creativity I'm in my box and they will put them in their kiln for 24 hours. So now I've picked up my finished mug and this is what it looks like. You can see how the colors have darkened and how glassy it is. It's just like stained glass. It's so beautiful. And this is dishwasher safe, food safe, oven safe, microwave safe. You can use them anywhere. This is how you fix a mistake. I was doing another pattern and I made this one dot too big. You may not notice it, but I noticed it and it was driving me crazy. So I got a little pen knife here. It's a little pointy razor blade and I'm just gonna shave that off and try not to shave off the black undercoat, but just shaving off the top dot. This is how you get them off. Don't try and get them off when they're wet. Wait till they dry and then you can just very carefully shave it off of there. It'll crumble. Just kind of wipe it off with a dry brush and then add a little bit more of the base coat. Let that dry and then you can reapply your dot in the right size. There, much better. These are the colors that I used for this mug. Two colors of green, two colors of purple, and some white. That's what it looks like before it's fired. Again, very textured, very chalky, pastel. And then after it's been fired, it turns to this glassy, dark color. Just beautiful. It's always such a surprise when they come out of the kiln. Thanks for watching everyone.